Merry Christmas. We welcome everyone to worship this morning. We are delighted you are here, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. A special welcome to our friends worshiping with us online. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you have the chance, would you check in and let us know you are worshiping with us this morning? And we again thank you for being here. If you're a guest this morning, we are especially glad you have come to worship with us, and we hope you will be blessed during this time as we prepare for the celebration of the coming of Jesus Christ to us again. Our Christmas Eve candlelight and carol service will be this coming Thursday at 6 p.m., and it will be both online at 6 as well as here. And we invite you to be here. We will offer the sacrament of Holy Communion. And we will uh, invite our virtual online friends to prepare your own at home if you would like to partake in the sacrament um, of something representing the cup and something to be the bread for that communion service. We are also excited that we will welcome back the Kelly Scott Jazz Trio, who will lead uh, some of the music. And those of you who were here last year know that that is a wonderful addition musically and uh, very beautiful, very tasteful, and very uh, spirit lifting. So we look forward to welcoming them back with us again this year. Our Christmas special offering is received each year. And we invite you, if you are able, to give a, a special offering over and above your regular giving. There are envelopes for that. Those offerings go to retired pastors or spouses who may be living on inadequate pensions or dealing with uh, medical emergencies that they cannot afford along with uh, the insurance that may cover a portion of that. Many uh, of my colleagues did not have the good fortune to be blessed with such a generous congregation over the years, and they are now struggling in the retirement years, and every dollar helps us to thank them for making it possible for our churches to still be here and worshiping. So if you're able to give, know that every dollar goes to help. None of it goes to administrative costs. So we thank you in advance for doing that. Truly, this is the day the Lord has made as we celebrate and rejoice in it. As we prepare for Christmas, let us begin with our welcome song this morning. You are welcome here in God's sight. No matter who you are, if different or the same, you are welcome here in Jesus' name. Courtney and Lila will come and help us with our Advent candle lighting. And uh, as they come up, if you will turn to the opening prayer after Courtney has... Uh, light lit the candles, um, then we will begin our opening prayer, and Lila will lead us in that, and I'll let you know when we're ready to start, after she gets all our candles lit. She's going to light three purple and one pink this morning. You can get around me. This is hard work, y'all. Takes time. Candles don't always light instantly. If you remember, we light uh, three of the purple for 
the Sundays in Advent, and the pink one was the joy candle we lit last week. So this week, and then on Christmas Eve, we light our Christ candle there in the center, but not until Christmas Eve. Are you ready, Lila? Okay, if you will join us, I'm going to try to duck here and let her just read the right from that start. Let us pray. God of love, bring us the sign of your love. Jesus Christ, help us to love him dearly and to love others in his name as we prepare for this coming of Christ. Refill us with your love. We ask this in his name as we share in prayer. He taught us, our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, upon earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. And as we prepare to sing our hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, we invite you to join us as we sing that together. I invite you to join me in the spirit of prayer as we have our prayer time together this morning. Please pray with me. 
O loving God, we bow in awe before the manger, before the cross, before the heavens filled with angel choirs. Lift our hearts again by the power of your love that once again we may open ourselves to the coming of Christ. Renew in us the longing for that love, the assurance of your love, and show us the fulfillment of your love in all of creation, in all the world, in all our lives. Remind us that your love is a forgiving love. And forgive us for those times when we have failed to receive that gift. Forgive us for failing to share that gift freely. And renew in us that love that knows no boundaries, limited by our human prejudices or fears. Renew us in your love. O oh Lord Christ, you came to us helpless, at risk, dependent upon the love of your mother and father. And you grew in that love. And truly you are the Lord of love. Help us as we seek to be your followers, to move from simply worshiping you to following you to living as you would have us live, to loving as you love. And Holy Spirit, we ask for that strength that comes from your presence, that the power of that love of God would transform us, that we might transform your world. We pray for that love to be a blessing to those that are on our hearts and minds. We pray for families near and far. We pray for those families separated by COVID. We pray that they will find that love reaches across the limits of time and space. We pray for those who are ill and in need of healing, especially hear us as we lift up Cheyenne and her family. We ask your continued healing with Tom and Donna, with Reverend Ron. We thank you for your healing with Matt and Bill. Continue to be with Ephraim and Liz, hear us as we lift up Bob and Laurie for your healing love. We pray too for John and for Reverend Dave. We pray for those who mourn, and especially Reverend John. Wayne and his family. Be with Chris and Gretchen and Larry. With Dottie and Connie. And hear us as we offer ourselves to you in this quiet moment. May we not only offer prayers for those that are on our hearts, but may we make space for you to 
Come to us. Abide with us. O Lord, Emmanuel. And hear us, O Holy Spirit, in the prayers not only that we speak with our hearts, but the prayers too deep for words, knowing that every prayer is heard and answered according to your gracious, loving will. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.
Would you listen for the Spirit speaking as we read from the Christmas story in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy, for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, all these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Here ends the reading of this portion of God's holy word. May God bless us as we read it and hear it, as we reflect on it, and as we seek to respond to it with faith. Amen.
Thank you and welcome back. We missed you, believe me. I did not like having to play that digital piano last week with the one note magic fingers. <laughs> but we made it through somehow. They say love is a mystery. They say love is a miracle. They say love is magical. What do you say? It can be all these things. It can also be frustrating, fake, fearless. There are a lot of things done in the name of love that don't seem very loving. The Advent calendar in our Christian faith calls this the Sunday of love. It is Christmas Sunday, right? We stand on the brink of the day, Christmas Day, and all it symbolizes. So there's another question. What does it symbolize for you? Have you thought about that? Is it the magic? The miracles? The promise of salvation? Is it the tree, the family, the gifts, the snow? Oh, sorry, got carried away there. No snow, thank God. At least here in good old Jacksonville, FLA. There was that one year though, right? I think that was before my time. Again, praise God. <laughs> Maybe all this effort and all the hope for magic and mystery and miracles. Maybe that adds up to love. Maybe it adds up to salvation, too. Whatever it symbolizes for you, I'm not sure what I can add. Because for each of us, that's different. I can retell the story, but I just read it to you. A moment ago. What else can I add? At best, perhaps I can invite you to reflect on how Christmas can symbolize the gift of love. Is that too corny? <laughs> too obvious? The gift of love? Isn't every gift a gift of love? Maybe. But maybe what makes Christmas unique is it proclaims a love that is perfect. It promises a love that saves. It invites us to know that our imperfect, often selfish versions of love have a solution, an alternative that picks up where our love falls short. I think that's good news. While I was preparing for this sermon, I was madly searching for some heartstring plucking, <laughs> teardrop causing illustration. You know, go for it. But no, I'm gonna resist that cheesy effort to fill time with a preacher story. So, as he looks at his non-existent wristwatch, what do we do with the rest of the sermon time? I <laughs> uh, don't dance. Sometimes I wonder if we really, I wonder if we really want to be loved. Because if love is a gift, you can't earn it. And you can't repay it. And you really shouldn't ignore it or reject it. That would be rude, wouldn't it? But how often do we do these things? Try to earn the love. 
repay the love. Ignore or reject it because, well, it frightens us, to be honest. What? You don't agree? Love is easy? Okay. Maybe I can illustrate what I mean. How many times do you feel like, or act like, love has to be earned or repaid, if you were honest about it? Mostly we do that because we think we aren't worthy of love. Imagine how hard it is for God to convince a bunch of stiff-necked people that we are loved in spite of our flaws, our failures, our evil. How would you do it? Convince someone. The Bible tells us God chose to send a helpless infant to a poor, unmarried couple living in a desperate, occupied country, ruled by an emperor who thought he was God himself. Crazy, right? What kind of God would do that? How'd that work out, you ask? Well, does the word crucified mean anything to you? That's how hard it was for people to accept God's love. Okay, wait. Maybe I've wandered a little too far from Christmas for our comfort and joy. My point is, love is hard. Love is hard. This God doesn't love us if we can repay or earn it. This God insists on loving us because he or she or whatever pronoun you want to use claims to be our creator. I guess kind of like a mother feels a baby she gives birth to is hers. Perhaps if I'm too busy worrying about how to earn love or repay love or qualify for love, I won't have time for being loved or for loving others. Maybe if I could take time to prepare for a gift of love, I would make some space in my heart and life for that love. But frankly, I'm too busy. I have gifts to buy and trees to decorate and cookies to eat, I mean bake. Well, bake then eat, sometimes. Raw dough is really kind of a cool thing, isn't it? I know they have that warning that says don't eat it, but really, who listens to that? Well, anyway. Maybe if I can take time to prepare for a gift of love, I might find some way to make space in my life. Remember like those years when there was no room under the tree for all the gifts and you had to make more room to put more gifts under the tree? Might not be that way this year, huh? Might not be quite so many people coming. <clears throat> I think in some ways the story of how Jesus was born reminds us how difficult it is for God to give the gift of love. Think about that. The story talks about how hard God worked to give us the gift of love. Think about how strange this story is. I mean, there are angels appearing everywhere to just about everyone. I already mentioned the time and history and the place in the world that Jesus was born into. Strange. Why didn't he come today when there was an internet to announce it? And this story of a near-term teenager having to travel because of a government edict to take a census, to take a tax, 
the obvious, reality-challenging claim. And this is really the hardest thing to believe. Their own family would not make room for them. And they had to stay at an inn. I have to confess, every time I read that, what pops in my head is the song from Les Mis with the innkeeper. Anybody else? <laughs> Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Look it up. It's on YouTube. And oh, by the way, did you ever notice, did you ever really read the scriptures? That all these animals that we have in our nativity scenes, there's none of that in the scriptures. They don't mention a single animal. Oh, they mentioned there were shepherds with their sheep, but they were out in the fields. But we imagine, and there's nothing wrong with it, but we imagine that there were sheep there because of the shepherds. That some wise guys came on camels. We imagine there were donkeys, I suppose, because there was a manger there. We can imagine all this, but we can't imagine God loving us enough to save us. Oh, we talk about it. We proclaim it in church. Some Christians walk around telling everyone they can how to get saved. But a lot of the behavior I see suggests to me we don't really believe in this saving love of a God who is our creator. Christmas would be a lot easier if we just concentrated on trees and cookie making and pretending to be mad because we have to tell the in-laws we aren't supposed to get together with them this year. All that would keep us from having to reflect on this gift of love that God gives. And frankly, that's a little daunting. We say that this love has saved the world, don't we? But if I were honest, I don't think we live like we believe it. We believe just about anything is stronger than love. We believe in power, politics, personal freedom. But do we believe in the power of love to save us? Because that's what Christmas really proclaims. I have to say what has caused me the most pain during this pandemic has been the willful, deliberate actions by so many that they don't need a mask because they don't believe in a virus or they don't believe in the science and they don't care about others enough because limiting their freedom was more important than whether they were putting others at risk. You see, if you really understood it, it wouldn't be about you it would be about who you put at risk by not wearing a mask. Hmm. But Christmas keeps coming around and telling us that God's love was born in a helpless, at-risk baby named Jesus. Christmas comes around to proclaim that that love saved us on a cross by dying for us. Not to keep the Roman economy going or to protect our personal freedoms. He came to save us from ourselves, mostly, I think. Real love always saves us from ourselves. And love is always the right thing, the right way the way to life. And Christmas always begins with this thing we call Advent. It's intended to be a time for us to reflect on the promise that love saves us. The hard part is taking time to think about that love that God has called and given so that we would be saved. 
Not many of us do much Advent prepping, me included. That's what Neil Watkins, who is the faith formation minister for the Florida Conference, if you remember that young man, he calls it Advent prepping. If we can do spring cleaning, he says, can't we do Advent prepping? He said, am I the only one who has spent a considerable amount of time throwing away junk so that I will be slightly less ashamed about how much stuff is coming at Christmas? Hashtag first world problems. The closets, the garage, the refrigerator are all too full as it is. And between boxes and sweaters and fruitcakes, more is on the way. I'm not complaining, he says. I just find it interesting that little is made of the effort required in order to make space. It's almost as if we were preparing in secrecy. Spring cleaning is a thing. Why isn't Advent prepping? Why aren't we taking the time? Then he cleverly adds, oh, wait a minute, I see what I did there. I suppose Advent is about preparing. This time before Christmas should be about making space. Then he suggests, maybe we should be making space in our hearts for the Savior to come. But isn't that ironic to make room in a time when we're all supposed to be social distancing. Maybe we're all a little afraid Jesus will get too close for comfort. But that love will be a little too hard to handle. But he offered a prayer that I want to share with you. It is a poem by a woman named Enuma Okoro. It goes like this. I want to find my place amongst the people of Advent, but I can't quite decide who I am. I want to be pregnant with God, but it takes such a toll on the body. I have given birth to things before, and labor is hard and untimely. I want to welcome angels and say yes, to anything. But if I saw an angel, I would hold him hostage and send a ransom note of questions demanding answers to God. I want to cheer blessings from the sidelines with a belly growing with prophecies and have friends and strangers take hope. Because God has a season for those whose seasons have passed. I want to put my trust in dreams and in the words of the ones I love. To believe that God is as close as the one who would share my bed. But mostly I want a break from being the one who mostly falls silent in the presence of all that's holy, who loses her words in disbelief, terrified by claims of joy and gladness, unable to believe that prayers are answered. My prayer is we will all learn to receive the gift of love and share that love, that gift, with others. I believe being a Christian has always been about loving the other more than about saving myself. I believe God sent Jesus as a gift of love To find the way of joy and gladness in loving others and in serving others.
I think that love will save us. And I think when we learn that, then God's prayer will be answered. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we are ready for joy. We are ready for hope. We are longing for peace. But send us that love. Double portion. With whipped cream on top. And let us enjoy it so much that we realize there's more than enough to share with anyone and everyone. And while we listen for angels and reindeer hoofs and jingle bells, help us hear the prayer you whisper for each of us, that we will receive your gift of love in Jesus Christ. Come to us, Lord Jesus, come to us. Amen. stand for the benediction and if you will remain standing and as we sing if you want to sign instead of holding hands for the alleluia we invite you to do that as well gloria in excelsis deo glory to god
in the highest. And peace and love to all. From this time forth and forevermore, Merry Christmas and Amen. I'm like wanting a